Hello, everybody. This is John Mark Johnson, Jr. again, host of Reform GGA, and we are continuing our series on double action, single action autoloaders. Today, we're going to be going over the subject of grip. Grip is one of the things that can really make a person fail in terms of accuracy. More so than the comfort of the handle, which can play a part, but more so than the comfort of the handle, more so than how heavy or light the trigger pull is, etc., etc. Uh, grip is one of the top tier things in terms of what is going to determine how accurate you are with the gun or not. That and sights. If I had to pick two, the two most important things, it would be having a good set of sights that work well for you and how you grip the gun. Not necessarily how the grip feels, although you have ones out there that are bad enough that you really can't get a good grip no matter what you do, uh, but how you grip the gun is going to be very, 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 very significant and usually pretty determinative. Now, in order for a grip to be effective, it has to meet three basic criteria. First, it needs to be safe. If a grip is such that it might allow you to be very accurate on target, but it either puts you in danger or people around you in an unnecessary danger, then it's not really ideal. For example, by the way, this is a Bursa TPR9 for those of you guys who are curious, and it has been checked and cleared, but we'll go ahead and do that real quick. You can see that there's no magazine in it. We'll go ahead and open it up. I can see nothing in the chamber. Give it a shake before sticking my finger in there. I can feel that there's nothing in the chamber. This is a safe gun. Go ahead and decock it here. As I was saying, there are grips out there that would be incredibly effective in terms of accuracy and those kinds of things. For example, if I took the gun and I literally held it around uh, the barrel, you know, just clear enough space for me to see my sights, it gives me a very stable platform for pulling uh, the trigger, very stable uh, sight picture. The problem though is that if I grip the front of a gun like that, first I'm putting my uh, fingers very close to the muzzle, and that can be very problematic. And then on top of that, I am actually gripping the slide. That slide needs to be able to move back and forth. That's how the gun operates. If I'm actually gripping the slide itself, I'm going to impede the action of the gun. So it becomes a safety problem for me with having my fingers so close to the muzzle, and it stops the operation of the gun, which is not good. So first of all, a grip has to be safe. There might be a lot of effective grips out there in terms of accuracy, but if they're not safe and they don't allow the gun to function, they're not going to be very useful. Second thing that a grip needs to be able to accomplish is it has to control the recoil of the gun, and you have to feel like you're in control of the gun. Now, a lot of times if the gun is fairly heavy, around two pounds, and the recoil is relatively light, say the recoil of a nine millimeter or lighter, uh, the gun's gonna stay in your hand just fine most of the time, as long as you have a somewhat decent grip. But that's not the same thing as feeling like you're in control of the grip. And that's where a lot of people run into issues is the psychological aspect of shooting the gun. Yes, the gun might not actually fly out of your hand, but if it feels like it's coming too far back, or if it feels like it's starting to slip and lose control, then you're not going to be confident shooting it. And a lot of times that lack of confidence is going to manifest a shot anticipation. You're going to shoot the gun, and as you pull the trigger to let the round off, you jerk forward and down to keep it from coming back on you, but what happens is you just pulled yourself off sight, oftentimes uh, just kind of as a reaction, almost subconsciously, people will do that and they wind up missing the target, they'll hit low, and sometimes, depending on the distance that you're firing at, sometimes by multiple feet. So you want to make sure that like, you not only are in control of the recoil, but you feel like you're in control of the recoil. And then last but not least, the grip that you use has to be such that it provides a stable platform for the trigger pull. Okay, how smooth, uh, you, how smoothly you can pull the trigger, how, much, how easy it is to pull the trigger and not move the gun is ultimately what determines accuracy because the only thing that matters in terms of accuracy is where the barrel is pointed at the moment that the hammer drops. As soon as that, when that round goes off, as long as the barrel is pointed in the right place, you're good. 
But a lot of times, the simple act of pulling the trigger, trigger, especially if you have a heavy trigger pull, will move the gun just a little bit. And I don't know how well you guys can see it's on camera. Let me go ahead and kind of try to get a little bit worse one here. Really terrible grip. It's hard to pick up on camera. But it actually moves quite a bit just by uh, pulling the trigger itself. And of course, on a double single action gun, that first trigger pull double action is going to be pretty heavy. And the simple act of just pulling the trigger itself is usually going to shake the front end of the gun a little bit. You need to find a grip that controls that to the greatest extent possible. All right, so with those three things in mind, let's talk about some common grips that are out there and some of the pros and cons of each one. We'll kind of do this more or less in historical style. You go back far enough, uh, grips, uh, sorry, handguns were considered to be one hand guns. And the idea was that you put one hand around the gun and a lot of guns would have a handle design that was somewhat reminiscent of modern handle designs. You would usually have some kind of a notch in the back and the idea is with that you take the notch of your hand, you stick it right in there and that's how you grip the gun. Now one thing that I want to point out immediately, and this will come up later, is that the uh, axis of the barrel and the center of your wrist are not in line with each other when you grip a gun that way. So if I do notch to notch, a notch to notch grip, my wrist is not going to be in the center line with the barrel. And that can create problems that we'll see later on, but that is the typical historical way to grip the gun. So that's where we're going to start. Okay, so that was the idea. Handguns were originally just one hand guns. And so you would fire it with just one hand. And the idea was usually that you extend it, you look down the barrel, you pull the trigger, and you hope that you hit what you're aiming at. It usually wasn't very effective for a multitude of reasons. One is that if you are fully extending your arm and you're going to do this over any kind of length of time, you're going to fatigue yourself pretty easily. Holding your arm up, even without a gun in it, just holding your arm up and keeping it held up there for any length of time gets very tiring very quickly. And then your hand will start to shake and that will of course cause accuracy to suffer. Another issue with that particular grip is that you have a lot of your body that is sticking out there and it's easy for it to get deflected by various things. In my particular area, we typically have a lot of wind. And if the wind comes along and pushes, it's going to push on whatever's out there flapping around and that could be your arm with the gun in it. That's not great or optimal. But in a defensive situation, or you might have people running around in your next to objects and whatnot, getting the space that you would need to get your arm fully extended in that particular way can be somewhat problematic as well. Another issue is how that particular uh, grip works when you have a very heavy trigger pull. This Bursa TPR9, it's single action trigger pull is actually fairly light. It's a four or five pound trigger pull, it's not bad. But in double action, it's like a 9 to 11 pound trigger pull. It's pretty heavy. And if I'm only using one hand to control it with my arm fully extended, when I pull the trigger on it, I can see the front side post wiggle inside of the back post. And that's what you don't want. Throughout the entirety of the trigger pull, you want to have your back notch and your front sight perfectly aligned and you want to stay aligned through the entire trigger pull. When I hold out with just one arm like that, what I see happen with the heavy trigger pull when I'm doing the double action trigger pull, what I see happen is the front sight post will shift back and forth, going left and right, and will sometimes uh, wiggle quite a bit. Okay, I've seen one of these things in there and I don't want that to happen. And so that trigger pull, that particular grip style, will oftentimes get the job done if the target is close enough but it tends to produce quite a bit of side-to-side -side movement and because of that it's just not overly accurate. Okay, so fast forward from that a little bit from the old handgun style especially where you had you know the black powder pa uh, uh, powder patch ball thing go going on and you fast forward to revolvers and with the advent of revolvers a lot of times you would still have the one arm movement and it actually wasn't terrible because with revolvers, a lot of them were single action. The hammer would be pulled back 
fairly light trigger pull, you can get reasonable accuracy out of it that way because it doesn't tend to shake the front end of the gun as much. But they still figured out pretty quickly that that is still not a very accurate way to shoot a handgun. And so you start seeing some adaptations on how they would grip the gun. They would usually still, for the primary hand, do a notch-to-notch -notch grip, but then they would augment it with their, uh, their off hand. One of the things that they would often do is they would basically clench around the other hand with their off hand. And this provided a little bit more stability, helped control the um, muzzle flip a little a bit, and was not altogether terrible, especially with revolvers. Now the problem with auto loaders, when you do that around the hand clench or around the wrist clench, that would usually be one or the other, is that you have a slide that's going to come back. And depending on how you hold it, the slide can come back and it can hit your overhand thumb. And best case scenario is that you skin yourself. The worst case scenario is that you take your thumb and you cock it back in a weird way that it's not supposed to move and you basically broke your hand. It's a really great way to ruin your day. So that over, so that wrist grab technique fell out of popularity with autoloaders pretty quickly just because of what happens with the slide in the course of shooting. Now, there are some people that I know in the modern age who still use that kind of a grip, and every time I watch them shoot, I'm just sitting there hoping that this is not the time that we have to go to the hospital for a broken thumb. Um, but you can shoot that way, and as long as your, your thumb is low enough, it can be relatively safe. Now, as far as um, the issues of recoil management and being able to get a smooth control trigger pull are concerned, it's still not overly great because you have a lot of the gun that's still unsupported and so it can still wiggle around uh, quite a bit. And in terms of recoil, every all of your control is on the back end. It's not on the front, so you still tend to get quite a bit of muzzle flip doing that. And then in terms of trigger pull, you still tend to get a little bit of movement on the front end, which is not ideal. Uh, like I said, some people can make it work for them, and some people have done it for years and years and years. But like I said, it only takes one time of misaligning where that overhand thumb goes to really ruin your day. It's not exactly suggested anymore. Another grip that was very common with revolvers, the overhand grip was very common with revolvers, and revolvers don't have a slide that moves back and forth, so it was just fine. But another grip that's very common with uh, revolvers is a low, uh, what is called sometimes a clamshell uh, grip. So you, you grip the gun like you normally do, you take your other hand and you wrap it around uh, the first one. Okay. Whatever your offhand is, you're just going to wrap it around. And the idea is that you're going to basically use it to pull down. And you'll notice that when I do that, both of my thumbs are down. That's a habit from revolvers. Revolvers have a cylinder uh, that spins around, and there's a little gap between the cylinder and the back of the gun. It's actually usually a little bit for, uh, for the forward, uh, but between the um, cylinder and the barrel is what I'm actually talking about, where the bullet will actually have to jump the little gap and the gases uh, that propel the bullets will get shoved through that gap as well and a lot of those gases come out the side and if your hand is anywhere near that gap you're going to catch those gases and um, minimally you're going to burn yourself at the worst end the gases are going to come out with enough force that you can really tear up your hand. So if from the revolver days a lot of people would and take their support hand, clench around at their, their primary hand, and then tuck those thumbs nice and tight so as to stay away from the cylinder and so that you don't wind up with any cylinder problems. Then that's from revolvers. Autoloaders don't have a cylinder, so it's not really relevant. Sorry, back problems. Um, so it's not really relevant with autoloaders to have your thumbs tucked like that, but there are a lot of people out there who shoot revolvers very regularly and they shoot autoloaders very regularly. And so they like to have a grip that will work with both platforms. And so this idea of doing a simple notch-to-notch -notch grip and then clamping the other hand around it, tucking the thumbs in, works for both guns. And in terms of control, because I have um, my support hand here pulling down on the gun, 
it helps control muzzle flip. But because there's very little that's going on in the front of the gun, most of the action is happening in the back, the front end of the gun will still tend to vibrate a little bit when you pull the trigger if the, heavy, if the uh, trigger pull is heavy. So in double action mode, which it is right now, hammer full, fully forward, and I go to pull it, yeah, it tends to dance around a little bit. Okay. So those are some of the historical grips that have been used. The old black powder, I got one shot. Just going into a pole, hopefully the trigger is fairly light. One that your hand bounces around all kinds of places and sometimes doesn't do very much for recoil management at all. You have the um, overhand or over wrist uh, grab that works really good for revolvers. Auto loaders with that slide coming back, putting your thumb over is just a bad idea. Then there's the front cupping action with the thumbs tucked, and that corresponds well to revolvers and auto loaders, but that front end is still pretty free to move, and you can still get a little bit of recoil and management problems, but the biggest issue is when you pull the trigger, that front end is gonna move around quite a bit, especially if the trigger pull is heavy. So, not great that way either. Now, before we move into some of the ones that we call more proper, there is one uh, grip that I want to talk about that comes up from time to time, uh, but most people don't take it overly serious, and that is the T-cut grip. So again, it's a notch-to-notch -notch primary hand grip, and then in the T-cup, you actually put the support hand under and grip around like that. And this one is pretty much useless. It really is. And the main reason is that when you put your hand under the gun, you're not controlling the recoil because the recoil goes over the top. You're going back and up. So your support hand doesn't do anything for that. And in terms of controlling the gun so that you have a nice smooth sight picture during your trigger pull, again, the hand down here isn't doing anything with the main part of the gun that's gonna be wiggling when you pull the trigger. So it's kind of a useless one, but it does have one application that can be useful for some people, and that is that it is a relatively safe grip. That is, for people who have no idea where to put their offhand, putting it under the gun is pretty safe. It's going to keep it away from the slide and everything else, and so it is at least safe. It doesn't really manage the recoil very well, it does not provide for a smooth sight picture during trigger pull, but it is at least safe. And so there are lots of people who start with handguns and that's the only thing that seems somewhat natural to them, and so that's what they wind up going with. One out of three isn't terrible, but you can do better. Okay, let's talk about one that has become very, 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 very popular today. I personally, honestly, don't like it that much, but it has become very popular, and because of that, it's worth talking about, and that is the offhand or full clamshell hand grip. I already talked about doing your, taking your offhand wrapping it around the front of the gun and tucking your uh, fingers. That's kind of a revolver type grip. What I'm going to talk about is the semi-auto version of that. With semi-autos, you don't have the chamber on the gun to worry about, so your thumbs don't have to be tucked. So instead, you can actually take your thumb and put it forward, and a lot of guns will have a little pad on the front that tell you where your thumb is supposed to be, it allows you to get a little bit more gripping surface. And the idea is that the gap on the offside, because there's always going to be a little bit of a gap there, you're going to take and you're going to fill with your palm, orient it so that the bone that runs through the, the uh, palm right here, you get as high up on the slide as you, uh, not on the slide, but sorry, on the frame as you can without touching the slide. And then your thumb goes forward and then your other thumb goes forward. So a lot of people will also call this the thumbs forward grip. It's called the clamshell grip because you're gripping around the entire gun from the bottom. Uh, this is a very common grip. And it's a grip that I've used a few times. And it's not absolutely terrible. Um, when I point with it, it points fairly naturally. My sights are basically aligned for me. So that part is nice. The trigger pull is not as smooth as I would like it to be, but it's not terrible. And in terms of recoil management, it can be good depending on the gun that you have. 
the idea with the clamshell grip or the offhand grip or the thumbs forward grip, whatever you want to call it, the idea is that your offhand is providing most of the grip. So I get my hand pretty high on the gun, keep my thumb uh, forward, and the idea is that I'm holding so tightly with this hand, with my offhand, that the gun can recoil without it coming out of my hand. Okay, that's what you should be able to do with an offhand grip. Now, there are some people who say when you do your offhand grip, you know, your primary hand is only providing like 30 to 40 percent of your grip, and then the offhand is providing 60 to 70 percent of the grip. Well, frankly, I don't know what 60 or 70 percent feels like exactly, but the one thing that I know that needs to be accomplished is that slide needs to be able to rack when the gun goes off. So that's what I practice. How tightly do I have to grip the gun if I'm using an offhand grip? Tightly enough that I can cycle the action with only holding it in my offhand. And if you can do that, then you can grip the gun tightly enough for the offhand grip to be effective. But like I said, that doesn't work in all cases. And this gun is a really good example of a gun that that doesn't work well on. Yes, I can do it, and you saw me do it, but here's a problem. This gun has a very, very slick grip right now. Now granted you can do aftermarket grips and there's things that you can add to them that changes it, but as it is right now, this is a very slick grip. So if it's a hot day and I'm starting to sweat and I sweat pretty easily and this was the case even before I gained weight, although gaining weight didn't help, the gun starts to slip around a little bit. Okay. I also tend to have fairly oily skin. That doesn't help things. And then there's once in a while where I've managed to drop my gun in the mud and then it gets all goopy and slick and it's just not good. This idea of uh, the offhand grip being your primary grip is very much so a friction dependent system. If you lose friction, that gun's going to come flying back. Now granted, you usually have your other hand there to, to catch it but it's gonna feel loose in the hand if your hands are slick at all and if you can't get a good uh, firm purchase on it. It's a very friction dependent grip. And so if you have a gun with a good gripping surface, good stippling, whatnot, and you're not a person who is perhaps prone to sweating all that much, you don't have overly oily skin, oily skin it might work for you. But for me, not a great option. So what I like to do is I like to do a mechanical grip instead of a friction-based grip. And a mechanical grip is you're actually taking the motion of the gun. When it fires, it's going to move back and up. And that's the motion that I'm trying to control. I don't want it to move back. So I'm going to position my hand in such a way that I'm actually going to catch the main impulse with my hand. Okay, you'll see the center of my wrist, ignore the wrist they are, but the center of my wrist is actually in line with the barrel. A lot of times when people just do a notch to notch grab, the center of the wrist is, uh, wrist is off center from the line of the barrel. And what that means is that the gun is going to have the habit of twisting in the hand whenever you fire it. It's always going to uh, choose the path of re least resistance. And so it's going to go up and back around the pivot point that your wrist is providing. But if I move my wrist slightly over the center line so that the center of my wrist is in line with the center of the barrel, I don't have that problem anymore. And it's mechanically locked in place. It doesn't depend on friction anymore. I am sending the gun directly right into my hand. It has nowhere else to go. It is fixed right there. And so the main recoil impulse is controlled by where my wrist is relative to the line of the barrel. Okay. Now, the next thing that I need to be able to control is how stable the front end is. Okay, so it's a safe grip and that, you know, as long as I can grip it fairly strongly, it's okay. And the recoil is going right into my wrist instead of being diverted away. And so that part is good. So it accomplishes the goal of safety. It accomplishes the goal of recoil management, primarily in one hand. What is my offhand going to do? It's going to control muzzle flip a little bit, but the main thing that it's going to do is provide stability while pulling the trigger. And in order to control the muzzle flip, as well as provide that extra stability, I'm going to make use of the trigger guard. And you'll see this in a lot of the top professional shooters is they will actually make use of the trigger guard as a part of their gripping tool. The ones who are the fastest out there, 
usually do that. So I'm actually going to wrap my offhand index finger around the grip and come back a little bit. Okay, so you can see my thumb is still on that pad, but I'm actually gripping the trigger guard instead of my hand. So I've actually moved my hands a little bit further forward. Okay, not so far forward that I'm at risk of shooting myself, but a little bit further forward. And I found another spot on the gun that will give me better control over what the sights are doing as they pull the, <laughs> the trigger. So now I can push out, watch the front sights, and very little movement whatsoever. And that's exactly what I want. Nice and controlled. Okay, nice and controlled. Okay, don't have the sight moving around as much. It's always going to move a little bit, especially with the double action pull, unfortunately. But you want to minimize it as much as you can. And that grip, it's not a notch to notch uh, grip. Instead, it's an over center grip. My wrist is directly behind the line of the barrel. And then I'm controlling the front end by grabbing the trigger guard. Push out. Relax just a little bit because this is a mechanical grip. It's not a friction grip. Relax. Let my sights settle down. Pull through. Good to go. That's what I find works for me. Um, the two major ones, like I said, are either going to be that offhand grip with thumbs forward or it's going to be a slightly varied version of it. We're actually gripping the trigger guard uh, to provide a little bit more grip and often changing where your wrist is relative to the line of the gun helps quite a bit. That's what I found. That's what's useful for me. Take it as it is. Hopefully you guys found something useful here. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.